Now, the global economy is set for another year of slow but steady growth. The International Monetary Fund says the economy will remain flat on the back of regional wars in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East, plus lagging demand from China. Now, the IMF is forecasting global GDP growth of 3.2% for this year and the next, which is the same rate as 2023. But the global lender has warned that Iran's rocket and drone attack on Israel, plus incoming sanctions targeting Tehran, could limit growth, pushing up oil prices and inflation around the world. The IMF also expects China's economic growth to decline in 2024 to 4.6%, down from 5.2% in 2023. Annual growth for 2025 is likely to further decelerate to 4.1%. It's also upped its growth outlook for Brazil to 2.2% this year, as well as for India, where the economy is expected to expand by 6.8%. Surprisingly, the IMF is revising Russia's 2024 growth forecast to 3.2%, up from the 2.6% it projected in January, mainly due to strong oil export revenues. Meanwhile, the UK economy showed growth for the second consecutive month in February, fueled by an expansion in manufacturing, while inflation fell to 3.2% in March, marking a change in Britain's economic outlook. The UK economy grew for a second consecutive month in February. The positive GDP figures have been accompanied by a 1.4% rise in the FTSE 100, which is nearing a record high. Meanwhile, UK inflation has slowed for a second consecutive month. Consumer prices rose 3.2% from a year ago, slightly surpassing expectations. The slowdown was primarily attributed to lower food prices, which offset an increase in energy costs. The Bank of England anticipates inflation to dip below its 2% target in the second quarter, before rebounding towards 3%. Markets are therefore pricing in two rate cuts this year, with the first expected before September. But the British pound has depreciated by 0.7% against the dollar. If the economy continues to expand this quarter, the UK could be pulled out of recession. Well, let's get more on this now with Rajneesh Narula in London. He's a professor of international business regulation at the University of Reading's Henley Business School. Great to have you as always, uh, Professor. Are you as optimistic that this continued GDP expansion in the UK could mean that the UK gets out of recession by the end of this quarter? I think this is a lot of optimism uh, on the part of the British government, which, as you know, is struggling a little bit. Um, in the polls. Uh, it's, you know, 0.1%, 0.2%. This is the first expansion since August uh, last year. And we haven't as yet, Oscar, returned to the level of output that we had pre-pandemic. We're off at a considerable level. So this is a very fragile uh, bit of good news that we've had three consecutive months where there's been some growth. But it isn't enough, I think, to break out the champagne. No, and as you alluded to, it is an election year for the UK. We don't know exactly when uh, Britons will go to the polls, but clearly uh, the economy is going to play a, a major issue in campaigning. On the face of it, uh, who might have a better economic management uh, credentials? Is it Labour or the Tories who've been in power for many years now? Well, as you alluded to earlier, Oscar, the uh, the FTSE stock market is growing, and this, to, to some extent, reflects the confidence I think the market has that Labour has a better plan, uh, in part because they believe that Labour is going to tie, uh, create or develop its ties with Europe. You know that the Tories were behind Brexit in the first place. So the idea that, that the Labour government will, will develop stronger links with Europe is leading to some extent to the to the rise of uh, of the FTSE. Okay, Professor Rajnish Narula, always good to get your thoughts. Thanks again for joining us.